Hello everyone, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell and you'll be sure to get all the new content that's coming up. Um, today, I wanted to take a look back at some of the classical labels, uh, reissue labels of the past and pick out a few highlights and a, a little bit of an overview of some of these labels, some that don't exist any longer. Um, the first one I wanted to show is really a stunner. This is um, the Argenta uh, edition box set that can, collects all of his recordings that were done for um, DECA London and released in Spain on the Alhambra label. It has a, a little booklet that comes in, um, I think it's six discs plus a 45. This is the famous uh, Nights in the Garden of Spain, Sinfonietta, the three-cornered hat. I'm not going to try to pronounce these in Spanish, even though I live in Miami. Uh, what is this? I don't know. I can't really pronounce it. Preludes and intermedios. And this one, I'm not sure this one was released as a DECA, I'm not quite sure. I think there's one disc that was released on London that's missing from here. I don't know why they didn't include it, but that is a really super set. Sound is very good. Pressings are good, excellent. It's pressed in Germany. And, uh, oh, it includes this bonus 45 of the three-quarter, three-cornered hat. So that's quite a blockbuster there. Really fun, cool album. Um, back in the early days of analog productions, they started with a few um, reissues of classical titles. Um, this one is from the Vanguard label. And Vanguard Stereo Lab produced some excellent classical recordings. This is a Stokowski recording of Virgil Thompson uh, compositions. They were done as a limited edition and uh, all tube electronics uh, mastered by Doug Sachs and pressed at RTI. Really great. Still very desirable. This was uh, the third one in the series, Night in the Tropics. Same credits. That's also a Vanguard recording. And this one is um, from the Vox label. This was taken from a four disc box uh, called uh, works, Rebel Works for Orchestra. Um, this was one of the better discs in the box, but they all were excellent. Um, they were produced in quad and stereo. And the engineering was by Mark o Obert, <coughs> excuse me, and Joanna Nickerens. Uh, for elite recordings. They did quite a few for Vox um, and other labels, none such. Really, really stellar engineering. Fantastic record. Highly recommend that. Um, one short-lived label that came around for a little while, a couple years, was Athena. And we all had high hopes that they would stick around. Uh, unfortunately, they did not, but they started out with a bang with this. This was also a um, box recording, uh, Rachmaninoff Symphonic Dances. It has since been reissued by Analog Productions in a 2x45, but this was really well done as well. Um, this one is mastered by Bernie Grunman. And I'm not sure where, it's, where they're pressed, but that was a really good one. This was a nice second release they did, um, also from Fox, uh, Alexander Nevsky, Prokofiev. This is not the Reiner version. This is an alternate version. Um, this was done in Powell Hall, a really good hall. 
for sound. Uh, Doug Sachs, Tube Electronics, RTI, very, very nice. Uh, their third release, or fourth release, I'm sorry. Third one's really hard to get. It was a Connoisseur Society one, piano record. Uh, this is the fourth one. This is their first reissue of a London recording. Uh, this is Stravinsky Petrushka, and that is a well regarded version of this recording as well. So that's Athena. Um, so Mercury Living Presence uh, was an audiophile legend and still is. And up to the 90s, there was no really good reissues of, of this material. There was the Golden Import series that was done in the Netherlands, um, but they didn't hold up side by side with the original pressings, even though the, um, the vinyl was better. Uh, because the early Mercury Presence recordings were not always on the best vinyl. Only the first pressings are. Um, but Wilma, <coughs> excuse me, Wilma Cozart Fine, who was the original musical director for this series with her husband, Robert Fine, she came out of retirement to do some for classic records, some, uh, some reissues for classic records to oversee them. And there was unfortunately only six produced, but they are great. And they picked, they picked titles that were popular with the T, uh, the absolute sound crowd, the TAS crowd. And many of them were on the super disc list. Um, they are done from three track, uh, originals to, to um, you know, master to two track by, uh, Wilma Cozart. Fine. First one is, um, the love for three oranges suite. Uh, Sonic Blockbuster, Skyden Suite is on this too. And uh, yeah, there, this was once considered by Harry Pearson to be the best sounding record ever made, um, the original pressing. And that's debatable, but this reissue certainly is uh, a stunner and highly recommended as well in any version. I actually prefer this over the original pressing and I prefer this over both. This is the 45 edition that they did. It's on four discs, single sided discs. Um, I think these are even better than the single disc pressings, but either one is fantastic. They also did uh, Chabrier, Chabrier? Uh, collection and this is sounds great too this one I prefer other performances um, on the DECA London label there's an answer met performance that is very good uh, I think that's better but another good one I think if anything if you ever get anything from the series one of the best ones is the Dorati Firebird. Dorati was an experienced um, ballet director, a uh, ballet conductor, sorry, and he did a fantastic job on this. Um, this is uh, a wonderful, wonderful record, very thrilling dynamics. Perfect. It also came in a 45 on three discs, um, like that. So, yeah, that one's fantastic too. If I had only, if I could only have one, it would be, well, maybe that, <laughs> maybe that one. This one um, is not to everyone's taste. Bella like a favorites. It's Bella like a music, but really well recorded, and uh, it was on the absolute sound list too. Uh, this is really good too. But uh, check it out before you purchase it. You may not like the music. Um, this one is probably the highlight. This one or the Firebird. This is uh, the Revelle Rhapsody Espanol disc by Paul Paré. And wow, this one has incredible dynamics. Shocking at times. You will love this record. Check it out. They also did, I guess, 
out of necessity, I suppose. This was considered to be a really hot title at one time, Hi-Fi a la Española, because it was so expensive to obtain. It was pretty rare in the original pressing. Uh, Harry Pearson raved about it. You can see the original cover there. For some reason, they did this like in this kind of jacket. But it's re it sounds okay. It sounds good, but not not a favorite of mine. So the last label I want to cover today, uh, I said I was going to go A through C, is Chesky. Now Chesky Records um, started by producing um, the RCA Living Stereo titles and um, Reader's Digest Classical, both of which are fantastic. Most of them are engineered by Kenneth Wilkinson um, or the more latent um, team for the RCAs. And one of their highlights, I think, was The Power of the Orchestra which was a demo disc back in its day. This, this improved upon it in some ways. And this is a really good one, The Power of the Orchestra. It has a uh, night on Bald Mountain and pictures at an exhibition. So you can imagine the thrilling ride that provides. Um, one of the top RCA living stereo titles is uh, Scheherazade. And uh, this was one of the first audio file reissues of that. There was an RCA has to be mastered done before this, but it wasn't considered too successful. But uh, this one was, and uh, it holds up with some of the later reissues that have been done, classics and analog productions. They also did, of course, um, The Pines of Rome, Another sonic blockbuster, considered one of the top RCA's uh, living stereos. These were, uh, let's see, let's see what they say about it. Read tube electronics, mix three to two, Teldec virgin vinyl. Yeah. They did the first series on 150 gram vinyl, and then later they came up to 180 gram pressings which uh, actually I think are preferred. Another one of the top RCA living stereos was uh, Prokofiev and Stravinsky disc. Um, it's a shame they weren't able to use the original cover art on these, they're kind of generic and the typography is a little odd, but they got them out there and that's the main thing. This one, they improved the typography at least this is from Reader's Digest. This is the Brahms uh, Symphony Number no. 4. And these are really, really good recordings. If you want to explore classical on a budget, pick up some of the RCA, living, uh, RCA Reader's Digest boxes of classical recordings. Like um, there's a Beethoven box, Festival of Light Classical Music, Treasury of Great Music, I'm going to cover those in another video at some point, but those are treasure troves of excellent recorded material and a good sampler to start your journey on classical. So that's it for today. That's that's A through C, just some highlights from those records, those, those uh, labels. And if you have a chance, check out some of these things. If you're not into classical yet, um, these are a good place to start. So thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.